The title of my presentation is uh, Assessing Prion Infectivity in the Skin of uh, CJD Patients. Why skin? So actually, uh, a few of uh, previous studies have suggested that uh, the prions or PRPSC, the infectious pathogen in the prion diseases, may be present in the skin of uh, infected animals and humans. For example, in 2004, Cunningham and co-workers um, found that uh, uh, two out of 18 uh, mice uh, injected uh, with the uh, prion infected greater kudo skins developed the prion disease. And also use the, uh, the Western blot analysis, which is a very common assay uh, for uh, detecting the uh, PRPSC, the prions. The, the uh, Somtik and the coworkers from Germany uh, was able to detect the PRPSC in the skin of infected hamsters and the scrapey. And also in 2010, uh, Lotari and the co-workers from our uh, civilian center was able to detect uh, the PRPSC in the uh, skin of the uh, single valent CJD, as you can see here. And our own studies also found that the, the PK-resistant PRPSC uh, is present in the skin cells called the uh, the fibroblasts from the SCJD after the protein scale enzyme treatment. And also, uh, notably, the epidemiologic studies also associated with uh, associated the, uh, the SCJD risk with the, uh, the non-central level sensitive surgeries. And proposed that the history of the non CNS surgery could be a risk factor for sporadic CJD. So the aims of our study was to test the hypothesis that uh, there are prions in the skin of SCGD patients, which are infectious and can be a biomarker for diagnosis of a human prion disease. To test this hypothesis, we collected skin samples from 38 patients, including 21 sporadic CJD, two uh, valid CJD and uh, 15 non-CJD. And first we um, the centrifuge and enrich the PRP by the archer centrifugation and then test it with the conventional method, the Western protein. And then also test it with the, uh, the real-time quicking induced conversion as mentioned by uh, Jiang just before. And finally, we tested uh, whether the CJD skin samples is infectious with the BSC used animal models. First, I want to show you the Western blot analysis for the CJD skin samples. Like here, show the US VCJD case. And uh, after enrichment, we detected the uh, PIP in the skin uh, with Western blot here. As you can see, indeed, we can detect the PRP in the skin, but compared to the uh, brain samples from this case, it show much, much lower. And, and only after long exposure of the films, you can see the three bands, the PRP three bands. Then especially after you, we remove the, the glycans, the sugars from the protein, make the three bands become one band, so that we can see better this band here, and then compared to the the, the brain samples, the PRP, so it's very convincing. But the, we couldn't detect the, the PRP as in the skin samples from the second VCJ case, which is from uh, the UK uh, CJD Civilian Unit provided kindly by uh, Dr. Jim Ansight. As you can see here, we couldn't detect the PRP as So not every VCJ case has the uh, skin PRP as by the Western blot analysis. And also, we examined the more cases, like uh, sporadic CJD skin samples, and they use the non-CJD skin sample as a negative control. Here shows examples. Uh, then we uh, detected the uh, skin samples from five SCJD skin samples and then non-CJD skin samples. Then after pig digestion, and again, we could detect the PRP in this uh, VCJD. Uh, skin samples, but not in the other cases, except one 
cases, these show very, very weak smear bands. Then after the, this uh, enzyme called the PNG to remove the glycan, make the three band to the one band, so we can see much better the band here. So similar to this positive control. So this result indicate that the, the amount of uh, PRP assay is uh, very, very low or undetectable by the Western blot. Then we tend to the adequate analysis, which is a highly sensitive assay for the uh, PRP assay. And uh, we coated the, the, all the skin samples and uh, sent the samples to uh, Dr. Biden Cohen's lab at the Rock Mountain, NIH Rock Mountain Laboratories. So all the samples were uh, examined uh, blindly, so they didn't know the diagnosis of the samples. Then we're interested in here, I will show you the examples and the, uh, the adequate uh, result from five uh, CJD, sporadic CJD cases and two VCJD cases and 10 non-CJD samples. And uh, the brain samples also diluted uh, at uh, 100,000 volts and the skin samples Again, the, uh, without uh, concentration, and then also P4 is concentrated skin samples. So diluted at uh, 1,000 fold. And as you can see here, all the CJD samples show very quick and positive response. And as you can see, without, uh, within 10 hours. But all this uh, response was not found in the uh, brain or skin samples from the uh, non-CJD controls. And this result uh, were further confirmed with more cases, uh, 16 uh, CJD cases, and then uh, five non-CJD skin samples, and then all different uh, body areas, the skin areas. And here shows the summary of this result. You can see the SCJD is here, and this is non-CJD. So then overall, the um, uh, specificity and uh, the sensitivity is about uh, 100%. And to determine how early we can uh, find the, the PRPS in the skin, and we address the question uh, by uh, using the annual models. We injected the uh, hamsters here with the, the famous 263K prions. And then and we collect the skin samples and brain samples at a different time point to see how early we can detect it with this. Then here, First, we check the uh, brain samples, use the Western blot, the conventional method, the Western blot, and also histology. The earliest uh, the uh, PRPS we can detect is about uh, seven weeks, the 49 days. You can see very small amount of. And also the histology, you can see the uh, vacuoles, the uh, under microscope, you can see those, and also stainings. But very interestingly, with the uh, adequate, with the skin samples, we can detect Actually, the uh, prions, just the three weeks, so much, much earlier than the, uh, even the brain samples. But of course, the brain sample is the conventional. And also, at, 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 yeah, at this time, the animals show no clinical signs. So it looks like we can detect it even preclinically, use, use the skin adequate analysis. Finally, we want to determine whether the skin sample is infectious or not. Then, to do this, we use the biosay, use the uh, two humanized uh, the transgenic mouse, uh, the, uh, mouse nice. First is it called the TGN6H, which uh, the mice express in the human PRP with the uh, mutation and without uh, the, the sugars, just to uh, show one band. And also, this mice uh, carry the uh, polymorphism 129 methanin, methanin. That's very important. Uh, and also, Dr. Uh, John Courage I mentioned those polymorphisms before. And, and also the second uh, the models is TGW, which is a, a human white type of protein, carry the uh, 129 polymorphism VV. So we inoculated uh, intracellularly with the SCJD MM2 skin samples into these mice and into the TGN6H mice because they all, uh, the genotype matched. And also, we inaugurate the, the uh, TGWV mice with the uh, SCGD VV1 uh, skin samples. Then also, we have the control, the negative control, with the normal, uh, normal uh, non-CGD the skin samples. Then, as you can see here, this is a percentage survival rate. Survival rate, you can see, 
the, all the TGN6 mice uh, inaugurated with SCGD MM2 skin samples or developed the, the disease within 420 days. Then the TGWE mice developed the disease within uh, the 570 days. But the, all these mice inoculated with uh, uh, normal skin samples show no disease. So they all do that. Very good. And we further and uh, check that this, uh, confirm this with the Western blot, uh, uh, with examination of the brain samples by Western blot. As you can see, all the skin inoculated, the, the uh, CJD skin samples show this PK resistant PRP. This is the PRPSC, but not in the inoculated uh, mouse brains. Then, and with, with the, the histology and the microscope, you can see here this is normal with no any changes. Then the, this is positive control inoculated the CJD brain samples. You can see the vacuums, the strong staining, PIP stainings. Then this is the skin samples. You see, very similar to the, even the brain samples. So ratio very, very strongly similar, this infectivity. Not only in the TGN6H mice, those mutant mice, but also in this TGWE mice, you can see the uh, PK resistant PRPSC after PK digestion in the skin, uh, CGD skin inoculated uh, mice, but not in this uh, inoculated with the normal skins. And then the histology, again, you can see the uh, vacuums and the microscope and then PRP staining. To summarize this talk, the prion CD activity is detectable in the skin of uh, CGD patients, which may set up a basis for developing the skin-based anti-molten and post-molten adequate assay for CGD. Then, also, the prions in the skin of uh, SCJD are infectious, at least with the annual model, show, which may raise concerns about the potential for idiogenic SCJD transmission through the skin during the non CNS surgeries. So that, I think, is very, very, uh, a very serious concerns about it. But uh, mm -hmm. finally, I want to make sure that in no way does our study imply that the prion transmission can occur while casual contact. So just be sure. Uh, this is finally I want to thank all people here for the contribution, especially the donor and um, who uh, support our uh, research through the CJ Foundation, the Betty Barry, the Jeffrey and Mary Smith Family Foundation, and Cookie and Steve Winson and Casey Wesh and family and the families of uh, CJ Foundation and people did work from my lab and from. Kohei's lab, and my collaborator, especially Dr. Chin Zhong Kung, who helped me uh, do the uh, transmission studies, and also the uh, funding for CJ Foundation, NHCDC, and then the, our civilian center who helped us set up the protocol, collect the tissue, especially the, um, the, uh, you know, the uh, Andrew Webb. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>